The Dodgers are insisting they do not need a closer. On Anthony Davis's birthday, we examine his impact with the surging LA Lakers. And once again, we are left asking ourselves, is Odell Beckham Jr. crazy? Good morning, I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports scene in the world, Los Angeles. This is the faithful Angelino's Morning Report. It is March 12th, 2023. It is a delightful Sunday. Take a moment, thank the Lord for the good things that you have in your life. I have a lovely wife, I have you guys. Let's talk LA sports while we have the chance. If you like the content that we put out, click and clack the like button and clack the subscribe button. There's a notifications bell. Hit that. It'll let you know when we drop new content. Sharing is caring. Let people know we exist. By all means, comment. I'm flying back to Portland today. I need something to keep awake with, right? Before we go through the news and notes, a look at the scoreboard. UCLA fell to Arizona in the Pac-12 title game out in Vegas last night, 61-59. Courtney Rainey sank a three-pointer to boost the Wildcats to the win. Amari Bailey tried his best. He led the Bruins with 19 points. Now, we are left wondering how much damage this causes UCLA in terms of seeding for the upcoming NCAA playoffs. There's pluses and minuses now, but late losses do not help. UCLA, for example, they finished the regular season at 29-5. and five. You might be as old as I am and remember back when 20 wins was good enough to get you a pretty good slot in the NCAA tournament. Not now. You need way more. They won the Pac-12 tournament. Uh, they won the Pac-12, I should say, during the regular season. They were ranked as high as number two in the nation. But again, did the Bruins do enough to get a top seed in March Madness? We'll have to f wait until noon to find out. But you can't get around it. UCLA needed this win. They were down two injured starters, for example. One, Jalen Clark, definitely out for the year. And two of their losses did come to Arizona. So we'll have to figure out at noon where everything uh, shakes out. Kawhi Leonard scored 38 points for the Clippers. They defeated the New York Knicks 106 to 95. The Kings winning streak comes to an end. It took a shootout to do it. Nashville wins 2-1. And the LA Galaxy and Sporting KC played a scoreless match. There is a rapid recap of that match on the Galaxy playlist. There is just simply no way getting around it. The LA Galaxy, drama-filled, listless, rudderless. And now, after having their celebration at the Rose Bowl canceled due to a torrential downpour, getting their heads kicked in in Dallas, and getting outshot 30-8 to eight in Kansas City. Now they're coming home to a massive fan protest for their home opener. Could you possibly imagine a worse opening to the year for the LA Galaxy? Meanwhile, today, the Lakers are going to play the New York Knicks at 6 o'clock. The Lakers are rating three in their last 11 games. And LAFC will play host to New England at 7.30. So, the Dodgers went into spring training without a closer, and at this point, they claim they don't need to find one. Quote, I think the most important question to answer is whether you think our pen is going to be really good. And we do, said President Andrew Friedman. He was talking with the Orange County Register about that. So they broke down who are the relievers on the Dodgers, and if they decided on a closer, who would be the best candidate? It would be Evan Phillips, possibly the best arm. But Dave Roberts has said that Phillips is so effective, so versatile, that there is no need to have him be the closer. What if the big threat is somebody in the seventh inning? They'll bring in Phillips or the eighth. There is no need to have him limited to getting the last three outs of the, year, of the game. And honestly, I'm not saying this idea is a great idea, but can you blame the Dodgers for thinking that way? Kenley Jansen struggled mightily for his last couple of years with the LA Dodgers. For that matter, they replaced Jansen with Craig Kimbrell, and Kimbrell lit so many flyers last year that Greta Thunberg blamed him for climate change. It was really bad. So... Can you blame them for thinking that way? I get that you want a closer. 
not having one, it kind of gives you that vibe like you're walking through a public park without your pants on or something like that. But I can see their point. I can see the point. You might remember that Max Muncy made this crazy adjustment to his swing last year because he got off to a terrible start. He would take this half step back with his left foot just as a pitch was being delivered. It was a timing mechanism, but it was all very strange. I mean, what did his feet have to do with recovering from a busted elbow? But his elbow is healthy now, and as a result, uh, the step back is deader than Julius Caesar. It's long gone. Robert said Muncy, quote, is a player that works better when he's got a chip on his shoulder. So I do think for this year, he feels as though he's the forgotten man, unquote. We have conflicting reports, by the way, on Dodgers prospect James Outman, who is in competition for one of the final spots on the roster. The LA Times suggests Outman is making a case for the spot on the opening day roster. For example, he hits a solo home run on Saturday. The man is batting 400 so far in spring training. But a Dodgers blogger took a Dave Roberts quote on Outman and said that that's not a positive quote, that it casts doubt on whether Outman will make the team. Said Roberts, quote, is he big lead ready? I would say he is. How we shake out, that's a different question, unquote. So you tell me, are you a numbers guy or are you a vague manager quote guy when it comes to James Outman? It is Anthony Davis's birthday. You remember last week they retired Pau Gasol's jersey number and Davis expressed his desire to one day have a ceremony like that. Hey, I guess there's a big men club when it comes to the Lakers, right? Gasol and Davis were chit-chatting and Gasol said that he told him, quote, that he could and that he should and that he will have such a ceremony if he keeps doing what he's doing. He's had an age where he still has a lot to give, a lot to prove, a lot to accomplish. He has that type of mindset of ambitiousness, of high goals, of greatness, and what it takes. And then Gasol said, stop getting hurt, bro. I mean, he didn't say that, but I just like the idea of Gasol in a Spanish accent calling everybody bro. Now, to say opponents are failing in their attempts to stop Davis, that's a bit of an understatement. Darvin Ham noted as much. He was talking with the LA Times. He understands what's working, what's not working, what's being given, and what's being taken away. They are on high extra alert towards him. They're going to put two, three guys around him at all times, but he's a smart basketball player. He didn't get this far by accident. The Times then built a case claiming that Davis drawing these double and triple teams enabled D'Angelo Russell to score his 28 points in the Lakers' last victory on Friday night. If you recall before the season, Austin Reeves said he spent the entire offseason working on conditioning because he believed he ran out of gas during his rookie year. Uh, said Reeves, they speak of the rookie wall, and I didn't believe them when they talked to me about it, but it's definitely a thing, unquote. Reeves said that his approach to the offseason, he took two full weeks off. Then he hit the gym every single day and focused on getting enough sleep. You hear athletes talking a lot about that. To Reeves' credit, he got the memo super quick. Just one, uh, one year where he ran out of gas. And if you notice on the court, he's got a lot of energy going out there. I wonder if... When does a person realize that they're insane? Is it possible that you're, you're insane when you don't question that you're insane? Somebody needs to do a case study about that because Odell Beckham Jr., I don't know if he realizes he's crazy. He misses the entire season last year due to blasting out his knee. Now, in that time since, he crashed Sean McBay's wedding. He got thrown off of a commercial flight. He holds an open tryout, by the way, yesterday to show the NFL teams that he's getting healthy. And what does he ask of those 10 teams that showed up, including the Rams, by the way? What does he ask of them? Allegedly $20 million a year. What? 
20 million and a pony, $20 million a year. Now let's assume that he gets the message when all the GMs laugh in his face. How far does the dro price drop, right? From 20 million. And how does this impact the Rams? If the Rams are probably priced out at say $7 million, because we were talking about that last, uh, last night, we were talking about how one of their defensive linemen who's gonna be a free agent, Ashawn Robinson, would probably demand about a minimum of $7 million a year on the free agent market. Rams can't afford that. So you would be asking Odell Beckham to take a pay cut from his stated goal of $20 million and cut that two thirds. Yeah, I don't like the odds of that happening either. I mean, I'm not gonna sit there and imagine that he's gonna get what the man's going to get with a reconstructed knee, but I don't think the Rams are going to be getting a home down, hometown discount either. The Clippers' Russell Westbrook passed Isaiah Thomas for ninth on the all-time assist list on Saturday. This is another little factoid. West, Westbrook has just been had this enigmatic career. For all the eye-popping individual achievements, you remember he's a former MVP. He was basically known as Mr. Triple-Double. One of the knocks on him back in the day was he didn't distribute the ball. And yet he's ninth on the assist list. So don't get me wrong. He's not a perfect player by any stretch. But again, he's an enigma. For every legit criticism that people might have on him, there is a very legit re reason to call him a potential Hall of Famer, to say that he's had this extremely lengthy and extremely productive career. Mixed bag. Defensive back Zeke Thomas has committed to play for the Bruins. He is a junior college transfer from Cabrillo College. Now in the two years of junior college ball that he played, he had four picks as a freshman. Then in total for the two years, 22 pass breakups and 93 solo tackles. There is a belief that he is going to play safety because UCLA lost both of their safeties from last year. They ran out of eligibility. The Athletic ranked the top defensive pairings on every team. You get three defensive pairings, basically six players play defense in a typical NHL roster, and you split them in two. You have a first, the second, and third pairing. So who are the top defensive pairings on, each, on every NHL team and where do they rank? For the Kings, the top pair of Drew Doughty and Mikey Anderson rank 19th, which is slightly below average. Also for the Kings, Kevin Fiala missed last night's game against the Predators, which might explain why they only scored one goal. He suffered an apparent leg injury in a knee-on-knee -knee collision with Colorado's Andrew Cogliano. He is the Kings' top scorer. Now, it's not necessarily the end of the world until we figure out how long Fiala is out. Trevor Moore will take his place on the second line. It'll be Trevor Moore with center Philip Deneau and Victor Arvidsson. For last season, that worked extremely well for the Kings. MLSsoccer.com said signing Timothy Tillman is another under-the-radar addition that could pay big dividends for LAFC. The team, to be real, is still very thin at midfield, and they are in multiple competitions outside of MLS. Now, they're starting three midfielders pretty damn good, got to admit that, but you can't have them running 90 minutes per game. So the writer who believes Tillman is a terrific under-the-radar signing, the writer believes that Tillman, because of the fact that LAFC is in all these other competitions, is going to have plenty of opportunities to make his mark. But you let me know what you think in the comments thread. Let me know if you believe the Dodgers need a closer. Feel free to diagnose Eldell Beckham Jr. up here. Love to hear it. And don't, uh, don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelinos if you enjoyed the content. We're talking LA sports every single day. I'm James. Thank you for watching. We'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Corte El Queso production. Take care.